January 2014, and it's 38 degrees out in Augusta, Georgia tonight. It's cold, it's real cold. I'm sitting behind an old tool shed in a, behind a rundown apartment complex, sitting on my duffel bag. In the back of my mind, I'm wondering, am I gonna freeze to death out here? Or are these people that I met a few days earlier gonna invite me in out of this cold weather? Neither happened, and I was ready to give up. But finally, sleep overtook me. I woke the next morning to realize I'm alive. I persevered. Thank you, uh, contest master, and good evening, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. Have you ever had a moment in life when you just didn't think you could persevere? A moment when you just wanted to give up? That was how I felt that night in January. I wanted to give up. But luckily, I woke up and see another day. I grabbed my duffel bag and I started heading down the street to the soup kitchen I heard about. Hopefully I can make it in time for lunch, I was telling myself. And as I walked towards the soup kitchen, I started thinking about what led me to this sad circumstance in my life. It all started back in Florida when I violated house arrest. I quit my two jobs. I broke my lease on my apartment. And I sold the rented furniture I had. Cash that rented furniture, I didn't own it. <laughs> and I took off to Georgia because I was afraid that I would have another felony charge come against me. Now as I arrived at the soup kitchen, I was standing in line and I noticed the diversity of people in this place, kind of like the crowd out here. I had, there was blacks, whites, Hispanics, women, children, men, of all ages at this place. And as I sat down with these people to enjoy the best spaghetti meatball dinner I've ever had, <laughs> along with the thickest chocolate cake I've ever had, I'm telling you, you should have been there. <laughs> and as I finished this meal, I stood up and looked across the room and I noticed an old face. My best friend Gabriel from 15 years ago it was the last time I seen him. I grew up, grown up with him. We embraced each other, tears fell, we shared our stories about how we both had come to the sad circumstances that led us to where we are. And how we persevered and overcome the battles that we fought. And at the end of our conversation, Gabriel said, sir, I, I have to go, but can I give you a ride somewhere, man? It's the least I could do, it's been so long. And I said, you know what? Maybe Jesse will let me stay at his house. It's been years since I've seen him. So he said, no problem. Drop me off at Jesse's house. Luckily, he, had, he let me stay there. And that's where I spent the last few, few months trying to convince my wife, who was also on probation in Florida, to come join me on the run. I got this all under control, babe. Don't worry. Are you sure, Eric? I got you. In the back of my mind, I had no idea how I would provide for my wife and even myself at the time. Well, all I knew was I wanted to be with her and I wanted to be the man. I wanted to be her husband, her knight in shining armor. So eventually I talked her into it and she came up and uh, I felt the shame of, of bringing her there. You know, I was supposed to be the leader. And it really hit me hard for about the whole 10 months I was there. I brought my wife into the situation knowing that I didn't have no clue what I was going to do. And we got involved in a church up there and the church gave me a job as a cook at a restaurant and I loved it. I got involved in the church. We became so good friends with the people at the church, helping the little kids, delivering diapers, doing all this stuff, getting closer to God at the same time as well. And over those 10 months, it started weighing in my heart that I love these people and I'm sincere about the Lord. And I don't want to deceive these people. I don't want them to think that I'm hiding out in their crowd. And I told my wife this, and she finally, after a lot of convincing, said, Eric, it's time. And I said, you know what, you're right. In order to persevere this, I have to be honest with myself before others. So on that night, evening, I decided to turn myself in. I said, all right, babe, I'm gonna go to the county jail, get dropped off just before sunset. We'll sit on the curb, have our last cigarette, do the romantic Ju Romeo and Juliet type thing, 
we're going to walk into the jail and turn ourselves in. I've never done this stuff before, but it sounded pretty good to me. <laughs> so we walked to the lobby, and the door was locked. I look at my wife, my wife looks at me. Then we hear a voice, excuse me, sir, can I help you? I look at my wife, she looks at me. Um, I'm just showing my wife around, sir, we're new to the area. Thank you. <laughs> we walk off, giggling with our hearts in our throats. Go back to my friend's house, I open the door, he looks at me, I look at him, hey, the jail's closed. <laughs> he says, all right, man. So an hour later, we got the courage of, I said, you know what, let's just call 911, they gotta pick us up then. So that's what we did, and in the back of that cop car would be, unbeknownst to me, the last physical contact I had with my wife. I got transferred to Florida, sentenced to 24 months in prison. I was so happy. I said, yes, I thought I was getting 10 years. I could be, I'll be home in no time, babe. Three and a half months later, would be the last letter, phone call I got from my wife. She disappeared. Three months after that, I received a letter that said, I'm filing for divorce, Eric. I said, okay. Got to work release. I found out she was with another man. She was pregnant. I sent him a message to say, you know what, I'm happy for you. You're still going to church. You're seeking God still. I'm sorry I was a bad leader. I am where I am right now at this point in my life, not only because of the choices I've made and the experiences I've had, but because I never quit. And that one little phrase is what kept me going all these years. Do not quit. You will never win if you quit, Eric. You will never win. Keep going. Don't matter. Just keep going. And that, my friends, is a story of a quitter that never, I mean, a winner that never quit. <laughs>